the all-new Nissan X-Trail has arrived, and it looks pretty schmick. But what were once $30,000 family haulers are now commanding a lot more coin, which begs the question, is it still good value for money? We're here at the National Media Launch in Melbourne to find out. The Nissan X-Trail started life back in the year 2000, and what you're looking at here is the fourth generation model. It shares its platform architecture and some powertrains with the Mitsubishi Outlander, and like that vehicle, can be had with five or seven seats. It's loaded with the latest tech, has a fancy new cabin, and there's even an intriguing hybrid on the way. But this brings us back to price, with entry into the X-Trail starting at $37,000, for the base grade ST two-wheel drive. It rises up to $53,000 for the TIL, and this bad boy we're testing is the TI model. It's almost top spec, and it's 50 grand on the button. That's not chump change, and is several thousand dollars more than its predecessor, which was a top-selling model because it was cheap. And it gets better, or worse, because that price is gonna rise by another $4,200 if you want the upcoming hybrid model. What we've got here is a 2.5 litre four cylinder petrol engine. That's a bit of a snooze fest. It's pretty low tech, it's a bit boring, but look, it should be dependable and it can tow up to 2,000 kilograms, which is pretty good for an SUV of this size. There is a hybrid coming, which will add two electric motors and should be very interesting. That's coming in early 2023. Um, all models come with a CVT automatic and this up spec version is all wheel drive. Part of me laments the loss of the first and second generation X-Trails, which had a blocky, rugged sort of look, but I think it goes without saying, this one is a whole lot prettier than the third generation model it replaces. Split level LED headlight clusters flank a bold, but not oversized grille, while 19 inch alloy wheels are shrouded with modestly flared wheel arches, adding a little adventurousness to proceedings. The vehicle's imitation bash plate at the rear continues the rugged theme, while the LED brake lights are all about style and sophistication, I think. The cabin has been transformed from dated and dreary to ultra-modern and luxurious. I gotta say, this is super impressive for a mainstream mid-size SUV, and you will not find genuine leather seats like this on a Toyota RAV4. Indeed, these power-operated seats are very comfortable, with supportive padding and even heating elements. But there's no ventilation, even on top-spec models, which is a little disappointing. The overall cabin design is quite thoughtful and all the controls are logically laid out and feel really high quality, with the leather and plastic materials in use having nice tactility. Nissan has also done a splendid job with this big 12.3 inch central touchscreen, mainly because it's simple to use. You've just got a few buttons along the bottom here and the menu system is one of the best native operating systems of all the mainstream Japanese brands I've ever used because it's so simple. Big icons, easy to use. It's a lot like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The bonus is you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you want to use them. The new 12.3 inch digital driver's display is also very good with excellent legibility and loads of customizability. And there's also a 10.8 inch color head up display and a digital rear view mirror, which is really handy as it provides a much wider view. You also get a large wireless phone charger with 15 watts of power, USB-A and USB-C ports, a 12 volt socket cup holders and impressive incidental storage. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the super wide opening doors are really good. Family buyers are gonna like this. It just makes lifting kids in and out a little bit easier groceries, you name it, and they're backed up with sliding rear seats. It's a pretty versatile rear here, and that gives you a bit more boot space if you want. Um, it's disappointing that this car is actually very slightly shorter than its predecessor. I was hoping it would be a little bit bigger, a bit more room, but look, they've done some good things with packaging, so leg room is actually pretty reasonable. Headroom, pretty tight with this dual pane panoramic glass roof. 
Amenity is pretty good. Let's start with these one-touch windows, tinted as well, nice. Holy shit handles, coat rack. The reading lights are not LED, so they're not very effective, but you do get three-zone adjustable climate control, another USB and USB-A port, twin air vents, door pockets, and a weird spring-loaded armrest that allows you to see into the boot as well. Boot space is very competitive in this segment. In fact, Nissan says it's class leading. I don't believe them, but it is very versatile. You've got these really cool little partitions that you can use here, but there is only a space saver spare, but you do get all the usuals like tie down points, 12 volt socket, and a little cargo cover here as well. There's also seven seat versions if you want them, but now it's time to move on to the emotional stuff. Cue the driving music. I'm quite enjoying driving the X-Trail. It's big, it's comfortable, feels quite balanced on the road, and it's a lot more refined than its predecessor. It's a lot quieter, and it kind of just feels a bit more upmarket. But then, I guess that was never gonna be too hard given its predecessor was pretty average. But like the Mitsubishi Outlander with which it shares its four-cylinder engine, performance can be disappointing at times, and the same goes for fuel consumption. If you're looking for more power and less fuel usage, it might be worth waiting for the hybrid version, but that will add $4,200 to the price. In terms of handling dynamics, it's not amazing. There's a little bit of body roll when you go through roundabouts, but it does feel pretty settled for the most part, and it's, it's fit for purpose. This car is not a sports car, and to be honest, it feels really, really good in tight urban car parks. We had it. At Chadston Shopping Centre and uh, it was pretty damn impressive in those tight confines mainly because of this really really direct steering and it's really light as well so you don't have to put a lot of effort in to get it turning. Ride comfort is pretty good considering it rolls on big 19 inch alloy wheels but I'm not convinced it's quite as supple as its twin under the skin the Mitsubishi Outlander. That said its autonomous drive systems dubbed ProPilot are a lot better in both the burbs and out on the open road. The new Nissan X-Trail is a smartly executed family SUV with some really thoughtful touches that should see it find lots of friends in the ultra competitive mid-size SUV segment. But is it still good value for money? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. I mean, it's not as dirt cheap as its predecessor, but you get a lot more equipment. You get more safety systems, and you get some really intuitive technology. And ultimately, it's a lot nicer to drive now. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. We've got loads more, so check them out. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and also chuck in a comment down below.